So this is over a hundred feet long from one end to the other. I just want to see skill. Let's see if I can flip this camera around. That's the one-handed flip. Just did it. First time ever. Nobody's done it. You're seeing it here only on Team Aquascape. We needed to get to 70 degrees. So here we are. Oh my God. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Right. So we got some crazy stuff going on outside over here. This is the time of year we actually try to get a lot of housekeeping things done. Plus and maybe add some new elements to this crazy place we call Aqualand. Right now Greg is getting one of his big dreams out here and it's a giant water lily trough. And so we've hired in one of the best crews with Crux Lawn to come out here and do this. And I just wanted to show you where they're at to this point. Check this thing out. So this is over a hundred feet long from one end to the other by about nine feet wide right here. And the whole idea is to have a huge assortment of different water lilies because our previous water lily spot over here in our retail side just isn't big enough. We've completely outgrown that area. So this is our old lily trough and I don't know if you can tell but that's a brand new coping stone on here. These are just some of the housekeeping things that we've got to take care of. The old one, it was falling all the time, bricks were loose. He put on a much beefier, thicker one that I can actually even walk on now without feeling nervous about falling in. So this just gives this area a nice clean look. We'll get our other water lilies back in here. This will be mostly our hardies. This area over here we use for hyacinth and water lettuce. We'll probably convert that stuff over to there, which gives us more real estate for other aquatics in here. But this area will never outgrow. Not only are we gonna load this up with water lilies, but then carry a ton of tropicals. So we love tropical water lilies for a couple reasons. One, they look gorgeous. They get four or five times larger than our hardy water lilies. The flowers are amazing on them. The lily pads are amazing on them. They look so much better. So not only is this gonna be a huge tropical water lily trough in here, it'll also have a big wetland filter up over there on the end, housing tons of tropical marginal stuff. So this is really just gonna be our tropical section in here. The back side, I'm hoping to landscape. So we're gonna bring in a, a bunch of soil and then landscape the whole back side of this, just making it look more like an arboretum type setting than just a plain old boring water lily trough. Maybe we'll even get some spillway bowls or something carved in on the sides over there. I'm not sure yet, but it'll be fun nonetheless. Many months later. Hanson! Hi. What the hell are you doing? Um, making our, I don't even know. <laughs> I'll have you even have a good one for this, but. It really looks like a tent for the whole crew, right? Is, it, is that for everybody? You included. Is this the lounge? And that one over there is for the whole crew. We're making it for everybody here. <laughs> the problem is, is the temperature here in Chicago, extremely cold. It's uh, 40 degrees in the morning, sometimes upper 30s at night. Yep. Uh, can get up to 50s during the day, but those lilies need 70 degree water and there's no possible way to heat it. So we're creating kind of a mini greenhouse mm -hmm. over the top of our lily trough. And we went back and forth with a couple different ideas and I think we've nailed down the easiest way to do it. And so you've really just created a tent. Yeah, pretty much using PVC 
see as our as our poles. It's about 100 feet long by uh -huh. about six feet wide. So we're just gonna make it in sections or tent it in sections and then use the plastic sheeting and go over it and then we'll end up trying to seal it off. We went to the local pool store and got some pool noodles. So sorry kids out there that aren't gonna be able to swim. <laughs> we ended up with about 40 of them. We need this thing to be buoyant because it's actually gonna sit inside the lily trough. So right now we're just kind of going through. We haven't even tested it so Brian, I hope this works. Otherwise, well, we figured out how to attach the plastic, which was a big thing. The first thing that we dealt with was we really needed to be a tent. And even this was probably wider than we wanted from one spot to the other, because any flat surface on the top, if it were to rain, the water's not gonna shut off. But that's about as close as we can get to it. And you can see here, the way it sits, it's a little flat on top, but if water hits this area, it should be able to roll down. Then we wanna keep it nice and tight, unlike some of the pop-up tents that we've used before yeah. that actually collect a little bit of water towards the edges. So the idea is to bring the plastic down underneath the noodle, wrap it around, tape it with a double-sided tape. All this will sit inside the lily trough the walls of the lily trough will keep this thing from pushing out or blowing away or anything else and hopefully we can get that thing uh that water heated we talked about actually putting sheets of uh styrofoam like insulation board underneath and then you came up with the idea of the noodles and you know like sorry kids but it is what it is like the lilies will die we can't have that yeah we can't have that we can't have that. so i think we're going to finish this one and you can see how chris has left tees so we can really just link these things together and then when the water is warm enough come end of may first week of june we can actually pull these things off store these things and we can uh save them put them up there someplace and use them again next year yeah we'll see how it goes So I got this flipped over, what we're doing here is, so obviously the noodles, that man's idea, so much better than my floating styrofoam, sits as a way to keep this thing buoyant and floating in the water. Now we need to attach it. So we're using Gorilla double-sided sticky tape. When I use sticky tape, I like to use Gorilla. <laughs> Hopefully somebody from Gorilla is paying attention. So then we're gonna come in through here. I'm gonna put the Gorilla tape all the way down on here. And then if you noticed, I cut this a little longer. So then I can take it, wrap it back up and around this when I'm all finished. Tucking that in there, just making sure plastic's not flapping around and it holds this thing together really, really tight. So next step, Gorilla tape. Double-sided blue Gorilla tape. I do wanna clean off the noodles because our warehouse floor is a little dirty. <laughs> and Gorilla Glue suggests, or Gorilla Double-Sided Tickies, <laughs> Gorilla Double-Sided Sticky Tape suggests that your surface be clean. <laughs> For the Gorilla, g g g g the Gorilla Glue, oh my gosh. For the Gorilla Glue reps, um, I would just say longer rolls would be nice. Like, this is our fourth roll. same time. Oh yeah, the life of a tropical lily. That's what this is. You guys want to see skill? Let's see if I can flip this camera around. That's the one-handed flip. Just did it. First time ever. Nobody's done it. You're seeing it here only on Team Aquascape. <laughs> It is cold out here and I'm totally underdressed. 
the air temperature is about 48 degrees. And this is a problem because Greg's got all of those lilies. And I think there's a hundred tropical water lilies coming in. And the challenge is if I try to put the water lilies that are a tropical plant, tropical water lilies, into water temperature that's below 70 degrees, every single one of those things is gonna die. They're gonna go into shock and it's gonna take all summer for them just to try to bounce back. So what we're trying to do is create a mini greenhouse over the top of our giant custom water lily container here. The idea is that when the sun comes out, if it comes out, and we're supposed to get some sun this weekend, once I finish tarping all of this off, we create this greenhouse effect, warming this water up inside. So what I'm gonna do here is use our new Aquascape smart thermometer. And lucky us, even though it's 48 degrees outside, the water temperature says 52.4. So we're gonna come out here, bring in the rest of our greenhouse pieces here, and hopefully within a week's time, get this up to above 70 degrees. My hope is somewhere around 75, 78 degrees in there. And the nice thing is, is this smart thermometer. As the temperature continues to rise, I can link this thing to my phone. Huh? And it will constantly tell me, give me updates on when, what this water temperature is actually at, which is a really cool thing. Not only is the thermometer perfect for this time of year for things like this, because I can't imagine a whole lot of you guys are gonna be building greenhouses over your ponds. But what I like to use it for personally back home in my pond is when can I start feeding my fish some of the normal staple food that I give them all year long. Right now I'm really wanting to use more of that cold water fish food, which is good for water temperatures below 60 degrees, right in that like 50 to 55 degree area right there. As this water temperature gets into the 60, 65, what I'll do is I'll actually start mixing my cold water fish food with my normal staple color enhancing food. And then as I kind of move through that mixture of those two foods, then I'll move into just my color enhancing. So the smart thermometer is good for all kinds of things, not just greenhouses over your pond. <laughs> all right, one section done with an overlap. So I just tape that. We'll seal that off, second section's in. And then here, we move to a different material, it's uh, reinforced, make it a little bit better. The guys are bringing another 20 foot section. Bring it in here, we've got these little T's connect in. They're also down at the bottom over there. Just waiting for the other tent. done now I never said it has to look pretty to work <laughs> the different colored noodles back in there the purple and green duct tape it's just what I had if I would have done it all over again I would have spent probably like four hundred thousand dollars and just built a really cool greenhouse but <laughs> But this works. Can't wait to come back and see if the temperature has gone up. It better, right? Or this was a whole lot of work for uh, nothing. But um, let's let's keep our fingers crossed. I see condensation already building up on the inside of this, which is making me excited. As excited as I could get about a purple and green noodle PVC structure. Let's see what happens. All right, bye. <laughs> One week later. Ready? Mm -hmm. Are you guys ready? Are you ready too? Okay. You guys, it is exactly, exactly one week. I think it was like around five o'clock last Friday. I was here carrying these things over. You can tell that it's working because like this even feels warm and you can see all the condensation on there. Look at that. Like that's incredible. But it's been one week to the date. You remember what we need to do. We needed to figure out how to get that 50 degree water. I think it was like 50.5, maybe 51 point something. It doesn't matter, because it was a whole week ago. But the point was, we needed to get to 70 degrees. So here we are. Oh my God, it so worked. It so worked. That says 77.8. Can you see it? You guys, I'm not a mathematician, but it worked. Right? That is 20 plus degrees in one week we raise the water temperature in this. Those tropical lilies are gonna do so, so well in this thing. Um, it's basically like a bath water. Oh my God, it's actually really warm. That's insane. But just because it's a test, let's go see what the big pond temperature is actually at. Just so we can have you know some kind of standard or, yeah, I don't know what it is, but you know what I'm talking about. We've got the old traditional thermometer over here. Pull this guy out. Oh, I can already tell it's much cooler. 
That says 66 degrees. So maybe by Monday, this would have gotten up to 70, but at least we know that one worked. So all this is for spring sale next week. I hope you guys make it. We've got obviously a hundred tropical lilies. We have all kinds of other plants that just came in. Some new fish came in. I mean, can you guys see the plants over there? Table after table after table of plants. All kinds of fish on this side, all kinds of fish indoors. I'm gonna be there, Greg's gonna be there, Chris is gonna be there. You might see the pond professor, I'm not sure. Come out, say hello, um, you know. <laughs> hey, I had a long week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Tell all your friends, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll do it again. Bye.